Now uh, the big focus on the show today on in on Delhi turning hotter and more humid shifts in the rainfall pattern due to climate change have led to a rise in Delhi's relative humidity increasing discomfort even though there's um, been no significant change in the city's ambient temperatures since 2011 uh, this according to analysis by the Center for Science and Environment and this is what is driving the power demand in the city and another related report says the ownership of air conditioners in India has tripled since 2000 10 reaching 24 units per 100 households uh, due to the rising heat as well as increase in incomes and by 2050 india's total electricity demand from residential air conditioners in the current scenario will exceed total electricity consumption in the whole of africa well uh, let's go across to our guest to uh, you know hear more about this we're joined by anumita roy choudhury executive director cse and bharvina kandari environmentalist thank you so much for joining us and anumita if you could you know firstly explain this analysis uh, that uh, you know that has been observed the changing uh, rain patterns rising humidity and increase the use of uh, air conditioners and you know and that's just a cycle because increased use means more power consumption means, means more localized uh, increase in temperature absolutely gargi so uh, you know we keep talking about climate change extreme weather events when when you really begin to understand the data in your own city it's so stark so the analysis that we have done is clearly showing that in delhi now over the two decades the change that we are seeing that humidity is rising faster than the ambient temperature and as a result when both temperature and humidity increase and that really creates the conditions for thermal discomfort and the days with high heat index therefore what we are finding that this is actually adding about 5 to 7 degree centigrade heat load on the city and what is more startling is the fact that the, the even the nights are not cooling down and that is dangerous because the global studies have shown that high heat during night and discomfort during night can severely increase the public health risk increasing higher death rates mm-hmm. so now so at so when you are so hot and this so heat, the heat is building up and especially the peak night time uh, is building up in fact this year we found that demand for electricity during monsoon when the humidity had was as high as 79% and much higher than previous decade that the electricity demand demand was almost 40% higher than the average pre monsoon peak so you can imagine therefore what this all means for us and the it's just not the electricity temperature and humidity we also tracked the land surface temperature in delhi which is also increasing despite the fact that delhi has seen substantial expansion in green cover over the, since 2003 but at the same time the concrete surfaces have also expanded dramatically in delhi so this is all very consistent with what ipcc has been telling us that the overall the urban centers are warmer than the peri urban centers and especially the nighttime temperature globally is also increasing now if the electricity demand is going up like this and if the midnight midnight electricity peak is even higher than your afternoon peak or you know uh, this essentially means that the cooling demand is going up in the city dramatically we want to be comfortable and we want our air conditioner mechanical cooling system and which are energy guzzlers and therefore right. that's the reason we are seeing this kind of impact uh, on electricity demand right now All right, uh, Bharvin Akandhari. So it just seems, uh, you know, especially bleak uh, with the cities becoming more and more unlivable. You have the pollution problem, and uh, now you have, you know, this uh, changing temperatures, changing uh, weather patterns, and uh, increased use of uh, ACs, and you know, which are high in their power consumption. Uh, absolutely. I mean, we all know that we are living here, and uh, nobody can say it better than Dr. Anumita. She's the science and the scientists have said it all. not uh, today uh, we've been saying we've been talking about urban heat island effect etc for years now uh, but th- what we don't do is we don't connect what is really happening on the ground with with w- this data and with why we have reached here and why we will become worse so um, uh, you know these figures may sound very uh, um, you know encouraging but they are not real because uh, 
uh, I, we are actually cutting five trees an hour in, in our city, you know, right now. And this is a, a data that's published. So uh, if we are not even protecting the, uh, the green cover that we have already, there is no question that we will be able to even, uh, uh, and we know how the compensatory afforestation and uh, all this tree transplantation, that uh, what failures they have been. So it is extremely important, one, to uh, protect the green cover and uh, uh, connect this with this, because that's how when we will the whole year, we will work towards this is the reason that, uh, you know, uh, things uh, get better. Then also the concretization, if you notice, there has been immense amount of construction in the city and throughout the year, we are even taking over the green spaces and start uh, concretizing that. So those kind of policies and, uh, um, you know, systems changes is what uh, will actually make a difference and uh, uh, I, there is nothing more i can say because dr anumita is here and she <laughs> she's the expert and you know we it's nothing this report is also really uh, to me uh, or you know most of us as citizens as the very ordinary citizens it's not alarming because we have seen this and we've been yes. hearing this for a while so uh, the point is that how do we now connect this to all the mistakes that we are doing and how will we improve that because yes, uh, the, 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 we cannot control certain geographical factors, and we cannot control, uh, the, you know. So, uh, right, it does certain, seem very helpless, um, very out of our control. But we can uh, control the damage. Right. Uh, so, Anuvida Roy Chaudhary, what what advice would the CSE give the government? You know, this is something that needs to we need to start planning for now, especially uh, this sort of scenario that is being spoken about by 2050, the amount of ACs that they're going to be in all the households, the amount of energy consumption that's going to be taking place. Absolutely. So what we certainly require right now is immediate implementation of heat action plan in the city. And that means we have to go much beyond the basic idea of just providing emergency services when heat waves happen and when people get heat stroke, etc. It has to be much more fundamental than that. So that means certainly inventorizing our green areas, our water bodies, which cool down the surface and not only protecting and conserving what we have right now, but also augmenting that. And while doing that, we also have to ensure that when any redevelopment or development takes place in the city, you have to meet the minimum requirement of green per hectare of that development. And also keep in mind that we have, so this concrete will have to be cooled down. But at the same time, we also don't understand the other heat generators in the city. Do you know that traffic, the vehicles emit huge amount of waste heat? Even the uh, industry has huge amount of waste heat and buildings, which is our final, the most important concern today. So in buildings and the air conditioner, just stand behind an air conditioner and you will feel that waste heat hitting you. So air condition at one level is increasing the energy intensity of the built structure and also emitting heat to warm up the surrounding. So this means that we have to cool down the buildings. And for that, we have to mandate that we adopt the right architectural design for shading, for daylighting, ventilation, to cool down and the good insulation of the wall, the cool roof system, so that the overall thermal load on the building can be reduced and your requirement for mechanical cooling can also be reduced. We don't have to right. switch on our ACs. 24 into 7. If we have comfortably designed building, then we can certainly reduce our dependence on AC. Right. So uh, finally, small, you know, uh, right at the end, Bharveen Kandhari, uh, this is something we need like the government to do as well, but also uh, citizen action as well. And, you know, more awareness on these issues. Um, awareness, yes, of course, but uh, government has to lead. Uh, nothing happens without a sound policy and implementation. You, if you tell people to give up cars, they're not going to give it up. It's not that easy. But yes, you see in the urban cities all over the world, there are policies and, uh, you know, maybe it's a high, um, a huge amount of parking amount or, uh, you know, <laughs> heavy taxes and uh, one ways and things like that, that will make people not drive a car or robust transport system. So this is just, you know, right. a small examples. And of course, I'll reiterate, reiterate what uh, Dr. Anumita said, that prevention is better than cure. We're not going to uh, concentrate on only 
the you know, action plan after the heat wave and all those uh, emergency actions. It should be even before that. Right, so, and, and uh, these reports and starting permission, right. they have to think about it. And yeah. these reports and analysis serve as a warning and to uh, you know prepare for something like this. Thank you so much both for joining us on the program.